All right, so let's get started. Let's make sure, okay, recording, all right. Welcome back to another amazing episode of Secrets from the Saddle podcast, all things cycling with your host, Sylvie Dow, and I'm super excited to bring this amazing Canadian Olympic athlete to the interview series as our special guest, Catherine Prendrell. She's sitting in beautiful can loops, as you can see behind, the sun's coming up, and, <laughs> and I, um, so I'm super excited to have her. I mean, uh, she has so many accolades here, I can't even go through all of them, but you know, she started racing in 2004, and she, uh, she, the last one was in Rio, where she took third place in mountain biking, but we're going to have her tell her story. And before we get into it, please make sure that you subscribe and you put on the notifications for the podcast as well as the YouTube channel because this will be up live so you can actually see what how gorgeous she looks. And and just I have to mention I like, that wait a second, I thought this is a podcaster's video. <laughs> no, it is, but it goes up live. But you look awesome, and she's gonna be a new mom soon. So I'm super excited to bring that into the picture. Um as a, you know, a high level athlete transitioning to mom status and where does it go from there? So welcome, 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 Catherine. I'm so excited to have you on the podcast. How you doing? Thanks, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, enjoying a little bit of that third trimester insomnia. So I've been up for several hours now. <laughs> um, Maybe it's yeah. just, I don't think it's you. Like I had a horrible sleep last night too it's it's, it's that thing that happens when you're 40 <laughs> I, know. I just turned 50 so maybe it's the yeah. 50 thing too yeah but you look awesome and yes <laughs> Catherine is expecting any time so we are really glad to have her on the interview series now so let's go I always love to ask how did you get started because yeah. everybody has a different story. It's so bizarre, like how people started. How'd you get started in mountain biking? Yeah, so I was actually, I grew up in New Brunswick. I rural, uh, lived on a horse farm, rode horses all my life. And then I was 16 and my brother had started mountain biking. And I didn't know mountain biking was a thing back then. And, uh, but he started going to races and I went to a couple of the races and I'm like, okay, this is pretty cool. And like, um, he, then he's like, well, there's a race nearby in two weeks. You should do it. And I'm like, okay, like I'll use your old bike. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I just like went out and I just rode through the horse field. I'm like, this seems kind of weird, but I'll give it a go. <laughs> Um, and, uh, yeah, showed up at that race was just like, I think it was the only girl. Um, but I really liked it. It usually the, starts that way, right? You're like, yeah, am I supposed to be here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, so I'm just ri keep riding until they say stop basically. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, no, it was just a really cool atmosphere and, uh, I, I like the people there and I was like, okay, well, if I like, I'll get better. I mean. I've only done this for two weeks, so I'm, I'm sure to get better. Um, <laughs> and I'll meet lots of new people. I'm going away to university soon. Um, so I was going into grade 12 that year. And I was like, a bike's going to be way easier to take the university than a horse. So um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was just ready for something new. And, and, and that was it. Awesome. So your brother got you into it. Then you hit your first race. So how did it go from there? Did you did you jump on a in a club or did you have a a team or did somebody scout you out or yeah. how did you how did you no, move into No, none of those. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I there was the Canada Games were coming and like I had seen my brother try and qualify for the Canada Games. Maybe it was maybe it was even the year that I started riding and um, I guess I'm achievement oriented and I I like the idea of being able to go to the Canada Games and I knew like. I think I started, I must've started the year that they were happening. And I was like, well, I'm not going to make it this year, obviously. Um, but maybe I can do the next one in four years. So I started and that was kind of like this goal that I had. Um, and, uh, and, uh, sorry, my dog's going to bark. 
She's okay, watching dog okay. walkers behind us. Oh. Um, <laughs> hey. um, so, yeah, so I just uh, kind of had this long goal of like, ah, oh, the Canada Games would be really cool if I, if I got to be that good. And, uh, but in the meantime, I'll just become a better mountain biker and go on road trips and see the province. And uh, so, yeah, it was kind of like a, a lifestyle. And I did get to go to the Canada Games in 2001. And uh, I kind of thought that that would be the pinnacle of, of my career because I had the best ever result for a New Brunswick uh, female in mountain biking. I was six. And, uh, and then I didn't really know where to take it after that because I was... Mm -hmm you know, working a summer job between school and no other girls were doing it, especially not at where I lived um, in the right. country. So it was kind of, it seemed like you either had to, um, you could have a social life or you could be a good athlete. And uh, I was right. <laughs> beginning of university, so I chose social life. Um, but then I kind of- You chose social life? In, I chose social life, yeah. <laughs> um, but then I ended up out in British Columbia where I joined a triathlon club to because I, I like training, but I want the social too. And um, I met Dan Pru, who uh, became my coach, and then he became the national mountain bike coach. Um, and I also met my husband. I met them both the very first bike practice. So, um, oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Days. Really? Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So how did you get to Vancouver? Did you finish your university and then travel? No. <laughs> so I did two years at the University of New Brunswick. Okay. And then I did a year exchange program. I lived in Cuba and I lost total fitness. Then I did the Canada Games. What? You went to <laughs> Cuba? Yeah. <laughs> um, wow. Yeah. <laughs> and then, um, yeah. And then I, I, I transferred to UVic. So I okay. picked up school kind of halfway through. Yeah. So it was in Victoria because um, all my bike friends had moved out west. So it's time for me to go to. <laughs> of course, eh? So then... So is that where you uh, join the club and then that's where Dan obviously recruited you because he has been coaching. Actually, I, I kind of recruited him because oh, really um, like, yeah, because he would, he would drop me on climbs when we first met. Cause I was, I was out of shape. I had done the can of games and then I'm like, okay, that was cool. Like I'd never trained through a winter before because I lived in New Brunswick and I didn't know how, right? Um, I didn't, yeah. I didn't know anything about training. I didn't ride over two hours. I didn't, yeah, I just, I was a total rookie. Um, so yeah, I, I joined the tri club and Dan was our cycling coach. And, and that was actually when I discovered that intervals could actually work. Cause like, I just, I thought they were stupid because I just did the same speed all the time. Like I just did not get it. Hard. And then <laughs> for practice, we, he had a scooter and, we had a motor pace and I'm like, whoa, I really can go harder than I thought I could for like short amounts of time. Ah! So it was, I like, I learned uh, like how to fuel on a bike to eat and drink and that could, then I could go longer than two hours. Um, and I learned that I could, I could do intervals and go really hard at times. And, um, but yeah, like he, he, Dan had a development team and he had a choice between choosing me and another girl and he chose the other girl because he saw <laughs> she had she had more like snap right she she was more impressive rider um but then you're like excuse um, me <laughs> yeah and then i just kept training away and then like by the time it actually got to race season i was faster than all the girls on his team so he's like oh okay and so uh, yeah, yeah, like, mm -mm. he doesn't remember it but I asked him to coach me and he I, I, maybe he didn't reply or he, and then like <laughs> so I kept, like kind of pushing and uh and and then so he did decide to coach me so yeah then he coached me from 2003 to a world championship medal to three olympics so yeah wow yeah <laughs> It was a good <laughs> like, <camp> meeting. <laughs> we could have started this so much earlier if you had given me the time. <laughs> yeah. A whole year earlier. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So well, how did you I meet mean, your was, husband? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Um, he, yeah. No, so he was a, my husband was also in the triathlon club. It's like, it's funny story because he joined it to meet girls and I joined it to get in shape and we're like, we both got what we wanted. <laughs> um, but uh, <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, and then he, like, so, yeah, so we've kind of been able to train together since day one, and, and he, he helped me with the coaching plan before Dan did. 
Oh, <laughs> to so they get me started because I'm like, no, like I want to do, I want to try racing BC Cups. And actually, when I came to BC, I didn't think I was good enough to do BC Cups because uh, the BC BC girls were so fast. And so, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so he kind of gave me the confidence. He's like, no, no, I think you'd be good enough to race a lead in BC and um, help me train through a winter. And um, yeah. Nice. So was he on a cycling journey and competing like you? Because he was in there for triathlon. Was he in for mountain yeah, biking? He, uh, he, he was a mountain biker. And again, it was like, he, he had been a swimmer. He had been a mountain biker. And so he heard it was a good guy, girl ratio, good, <laughs> a good training group for the tri club. Um, so um, but yeah, then I think because we were both mountain bikers, we started riding together on the rides and, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, no, he, um, he does race. He actually coaches like three of the top five female mountain bikers in Canada now and, and, uh, our, our top male. And so he's definitely actively involved, but he's actually, um, a high school math and physics teacher. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. he's in school during the, yeah. and he's then, a, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I get to train with him on weekends, but um, not always weekdays. Cool. So I guess then he was a strong supporter because that's like been 20 years. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or maybe he, just attending with you. I'm her uh, co I'm coach. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's yeah, kind of no, nice uh, to have that kind absolutely. of support with you. Absolutely. And like, I think it's so important. Um, like just like throughout my entire career, I've been able to have someone that's been a third eye on like, mm -hmm. you know, how my energy level is, like how my training's going, how I'm riding. He's very good at picking up techniques. So, um, you know, it's, I, I have the benefit of, he does coach me now, but I had the benefit through most of my career of like having a coach that wasn't in my daily training environment, but then also having right. a really good eye um, in yeah. my daily training environment to, and just a training partner and, um, you know, just someone who is a hundred percent in to, to support me and my goals too. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That is a really good package. Like, do you yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> like to have it, did you say that he coaches you now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is funny. Cause like I have, um, another, other friends of mine, like, I don't know your husband, but other friends of mine were the husband met his wife, Michelle, so Steve and Michelle, and uh, she found him to coach her, and then they kind of like got together, and then got married, and <laughs> yeah. now, he, now he's Canadian, but she's, uh, she's from Texas, and now he lives in sunny Texas. Yeah, Wait yeah, I think like definitely having your partner coach you is it took us a long time to want to broach that <laughs> because, yeah, really. it can be, and like, you know, it's, um, it is like when I've done some coaching with women, they're like, Oh, like it makes so much more sense when you tell me, like when my husband tries to tell me like some technique thing, I'm just like, like, I can't listen. I'm like, no, I know I get it. It's like, um, you know, it can be hard to take feedback, uh, um, from the people closest to you. Um, yeah. and uh, you also worry about like, you don't want, your relationship to be too much about um all about the bike right, right. um or your training or your improvement <laughs> yes. um, so that yeah it definitely took a, took a while to get there but um you know just uh I, like have been through so many evolutions in my career and, and changes as an athlete that kind of in the the latter part some years I've coached myself um, I coached myself in 2014, 15 and 17. And then sometimes I'm like, I don't want to coach myself this year. Oh, I want to be like, giving like, me like that accountability. So, yeah. uh, yeah. Do I really want to do that workout that I gave myself? Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. You get worried of, of like, am I pushing myself hard enough? Do I have enough yeah. objectivity? Or, I mean, I've had a couple injuries and, and sometimes you're just like, okay, like, this is too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, you've been racing for, okay, like 20 years. Wow. Well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, can you 
is there like one time where you really had like struggled with, like you were just saying, um, you know, coaching yourself, that's huge, especially at a like really, really high level. Um, what were some of the struggles that you came across? Like, can you think of one that's just like, oh my God, that, that was like the pinnacle and I'll never forget it. Do you have one of yeah. those that you can think of? Um, I'm sure. Yeah. Like, <laughs> um, or maybe there's a few. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I think we all have a few, right? Um, but actually why I started coaching myself was in 2014 was because I was kind of having this, um, having a struggle in that like I had, everything was lined up for me to be an Olympic medalist in 2012. I had been one of the most consistent riders in the world for like the last two years. Um, I was going in as like reigning world champ, World Cup leader, and I like totally underperformed at the, those Olympics. And, um, it really, like, I let it really affect my confidence and my passion and joy and what I was doing. And, and it was, it was actually probably getting too serious about winning a medal that, um, that was actually what made me lose the joy. And, but then it was just harder yeah. to come back after that disappointment. Um, so like after that, I really needed to shake things up and I didn't want like if if I underperformed or performed I wanted it to be on me I didn't want to like feel like you know I didn't want anyone else to be shouldering any responsibility for my mm -hmm. for my performance so um I in 2014 I decided to coach myself and uh it was super nerve-wracking because what if I didn't perform I had been like this really high performer um uh -huh. but the that accountability and that that change up in um in just my energy and like commitment level and uh was really good and I ended up being world champion that year um wow so I was like well that worked out great <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, it was like, uh, you know, it was obviously like based a lot on the work I had done in the years leading up to that, mm -hmm. but it was also, uh, um, just sometimes like when you've been doing something similarly for years, sometimes you just need a big shake up, um, yeah. in, in, in your like energy level and, and approach. And, um, so that was really good. So that was, uh, I think coming back. Yeah. I would definitely say like harder than any broken bones that I've had um, coming back from a huge disappointment where you lose confidence and faith in yourself and your approach. That was yeah. definitely the biggest hurdle for me as a, a high performance athlete to kind of, to trust myself to go all in again when mm -hmm. I felt like I had come up short before. Oh yeah, for sure. I'm sure that was a huge mental struggle, not to mention like having to deal with <laughs> social media on top of it and, and well see that was before social media like oh, was it oh, God. Well, wasn't that perfect I had to get a couple Facebook. articles I, get, I got Instagram in like the year of like real Olympics um so it's like life has definitely changed for athletes after that and I think oh, you know gosh. it could be good for somebody it's it's a whole other drain and it's introduces a whole level of um comparison off the bike and all year mm -hmm. round that i think is a real challenge for like for now in the future yeah for sure even yeah. like you know I, I feel like i have more like body insecurities now as a 40 year old than i did as a you know like a 20 something right because you just weren't constantly inundated with what your competition is doing or or feeling mm -hmm. that same um like be for the majority of my career, my value has been on what I do on a bike. And now your value is what you do on a bike, but also how you present yourself, how you're received, how you like, you know, it becomes a lot more, um, yeah, it's just different. It's almost like I find like I was just having a little meltdown this morning, but, um, but I find that it's almost like you have to be like social media is like, is like training on a bike. You know, you like, you always have to be on it. You have to be looking perfect and the lighting has to be right. And then this and that, and I was just like, 
<laughs> that's why I didn't sleep last night. I, I was like having such anxiety about, you know, um, putting together media material. Do you know what I mean? Like, so that yeah. I'm always yeah. active, you know, like, right. and there's yeah. no lags or gaps or like, I'm always posting yeah. and I'm like, oh my gosh. Uh, and all I could think about was like, Which what I think I'm going to do? It, yeah. And it makes it really challenging because yeah. I mean, I, I think human nature that people are going to put out the best version of themselves or try to, um, which means that you're, you're seeing some pretty unrealistic or, um, images yeah. or, or, or things. And, um, yeah. and yeah, just that, I mean, we do have the choice of whether we want to be exposed to it or not by participating, mm -hmm. but yeah. also if you're a professional athlete, um, I think more so in cycling than actually in a lot of, um, sports, but, um, it, it feels like there, there really is that there is value to that. Like, you know, you can do, um, a social media training with a sponsor and then they'll be like, yeah, we're going to look at your metrics and see like kind of, and then rate you guys. And you're like, dang, that's I know. not awesome. You're like, <laughs> okay, who, I, cause, and it's like, um, it's like a resume. Cause they're like, oh yeah, you have more salt followers than she does you know and it right. really starts getting strange because I got I got some publicity because I had more followers on Facebook and I was like okay I now see where this is going you know what yeah. I mean and like and it, it doesn't necessarily mean that you help sell more bikes or yeah. whatever if you have more followers but yeah it's it's a it's a, a weird thing and it'll I think it'll evolve into something else, but it's kind of where we are, where we are now. And, um, definitely as an athlete, it's you used to be it's able to focus on doing your job. And, and now it's, that is a, that is a big component of it for sure. Of yeah. your job. Yeah. Cause I find it distracting. Like you spend <laughs> more time trying to get a good photo than you do like doing your training yeah. set. <laughs> Or maybe that's yeah. just me, yeah, like, but like, I, that's, like really interesting that my husband said to me one time, he's like, um, he's like, well, cause I would always be like, Oh, like, you know, what do people, what do my followers want from me? And he's like, well, what do you want out of that platform? Like, what do you want to give? And I think that's a better way to, to look oh. at it, uh, of like, not what, not what's expected of you to be out mm -hmm. there or like, what you feel that other people want, but it's like, what is the message that you want to share? How do you want to come across? And, um, mm -hmm. you know, you can come across as perfect and glossy and glamorous or, or you can come across as authentic and, um, and just kind of like, you know, if, if you have a, an expertise in coaching and you want to share that, or, um, mm -hmm. you know, I think people appreciate that not everyone is the same and, um, different people are going to relate to different things. And, you know, you may have less followers, but a more meaningful connection with some of them. So, yeah, I yeah. think that's the, the, you know, Catherine, I think that's the biggest struggle for a lot of people, even myself, like I fall off there and I'm like, oh, I know what I want. And I'm like, Oh my God. And you know, and I'm just like, Oh gosh, Sylvia, you got to keep it together. Cause <laughs> You know, you want to use it for a certain thing, but, you know, stop spending so much time on things that aren't like, you know, yeah. part of the package that you're trying to present. Totally. Yeah. It's like, where, where do you want to spend your energy? And, um, you know, there's maybe you would make more money if you have this huge social media presence, um, but would you be happier? So, you yeah. know, and like, yeah. I think that's a good point. So, so now you know, you're moving on. You've got all this race experience. I'm going to, just going to share this with you guys. You have to get the Canadian cycling magazine because guess who's in it? Catherine. <laughs> and when I got this for Christmas, I got this in my stocking and I opened it up and I'm like, Hey, I know this person. <laughs> so she's right well, she's on. Pregnant. Yeah, I know. And she's pregnant. I'm like, gosh, she looks at, is this current? And I was reading, I'm like, oh my God, motherhood bounce. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And because yeah. we just went through this whole court, like six week coaching course and nothing was said. I, <laughs> and then I was just like, oh my God, that's awesome. So also you, kind of a neat connection in that magazine is, um, there's also an article on Kamloops, mountain biking Kamloops. 
and yeah. it is written by a guy whose family owned the property that I did my very first bike race on in New Brunswick. So oh my like, gosh, right. no way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay, this is like the first magazine that I've read from cover to cover in like, I can't even tell you how long. So that's why you know. guys got to get it. And there's another, there's something on the, uh, the TV, uh, no, the uh, um, Club Cyclist Am Amas we are talking about in our anyways but uh, oh and um yeah anyways it's just in it's it's a good article because um i don't know if you saw that one about the um the para mountain bike no descent, like yeah, riding yeah, yeah. it's awesome <laughs> anyways and i i met a guy in b uh no sorry um bromont um Jan, he Ian Hughes and he's helping athletes do that. I can't remember what it's called, it's like descending mountain biking, like on four wheels. It's like cool. crazy. I'm like, uh, no thanks. I'm good. <laughs> but so now you've you've done all this, and I mean, it's been 20 years. How did you decide that you know now is the time to have a family? And my dog is gone. I'm just gonna grab it from her because it's loud. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. Don't have all this. How are back. you? How are you planning on fitting this? Like, what's your plans? Like, you know, it's been 20 years. You've been with your husband for a long time, and now you're like, okay, I'm uh, gonna now transition to mom momhood. Yeah. Tell us about that. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so I mean, my, my plan kind of pre-pandemic had been, you know, go to Tokyo <laughs> Olympics, hopefully, and then oh. it was going to be my last year of racing, and then, um, yeah, and then it would be like, okay, like, you're 40 now, like, if you're going to have a family, you should start, um, and then mm -hmm. this year happened. Um, you're like, okay, so, let's start now. <laughs> yeah, um, so I don't know, like, I guess, like, for me, I was thinking about this last night actually how um the pandemic was really good for me because I knew that retirement was coming for me um like I just I knew it in because racing was starting to feel a little bit more like a pressure than like an opportunity um and it's, it's not like anything outwardly really changed I think it just like you can't ex expect yourself to be the same athlete from year to year right because mm -hmm. you change um like the comp like everything changes so <laughs> the competition um, changes yeah the competition <laughs> like he keeps getting younger and you keep getting older um but no it, it's hard to like i've been you know from 2008 to 2016 or uh yeah or like i was like top five in the world for like all those years and you know I was like now it's I, I was top 10 in the world last year and it was like but that felt just as hard as being top five yeah. um and you know it, it's it's hard to stay at that level and I, I was feeling like my my energy for it wasn't the same as when like I was younger and everything was fresh and new and you were advancing like now it's advancing is fun trying to hold on to that level is like yeah is, it feels harder um and so like i f i felt like a transition was in the future um but i was also really nervous about it because like honestly racing is kind of like an addiction like you get addicted to being on the road things being exciting always having these mm -hmm. big goals and um every fall at the end of race season it's like you come through a little like blue period where you're like you don't have that immediate focus and you don't have that like exciting goal and so it was like how do you transition from being a racer and, and always having that to settling into normal life which is like yeah. it's actually really good normal life is really good but it's like it, it's not giving you that dopamine hit right yeah um quite like racing and like trying to be best in the world um so the pandemic was really good because, well, sorry, the pandemic is not good, but it was a- Oh, no, a good I get it. It's good for you. Yeah, yeah, it was good to be stuck home because um, I realized that like once I actually committed to like, like 
calming down and like not being so like forward focused. Um, I just saw like the, all the opportunities that I do have for a really meaningful career at home too, or just like impact in my community. So um, one of the first projects I did was I, I, we started a kids league in town a couple of years ago. And so I built a kids trail and like, so that was really fun. And I've, I've put together a proposal for a pump track in town and, and stuff like that. So there's, there's all these ways that I feel like I can do some really meaningful things. Um, Mm -hmm. and, uh, like locally and, and, and just that, like, you know, being home was really nice. Like having a summer at home, that was nice. Um, I don't have to load up the car and drive. Yeah. You have that, you have that fear of like, what will life be like if I'm not the bike racer? Um, And then it's like, you know, life will be pretty good. Um, so long story short. <laughs> um, no, but that's, that's really that's, good that you're yeah. saying that because a lot of people go through that huge anxiety of, of the like, I'm not important anymore or nobody wants to hear from me or, you know, my sponsors yeah. drop me because now I retired from you know, export and nobody, wa- <laughs> nobody wants to hear, hear about yeah. me anymore. Yeah. And I know that athletes have gone through huge depressions because of that. Um, yeah. I mean, like, I, was, it just, I always kind of gravitate to those interviews, but it's, it's the same if you're like <laughs> listening to an artist or a ballerina or, you know, anyone whose career is really focused around these big goals, these big projects. And then when that project is gone, it's like, Whew, you know, and like after every Olympics, it's a little bit of a like, okay, like what's next? What is, what is my driving purpose um, right. in what's next? And, you know, I think that's something, I mean, it's why people delay retiring too, right? Um, mm-hmm. Not just in, in sport, but in, in anything, right? Our, Business. our work is a huge part of our identity. And, yeah. um, and obviously that change can be intimidating and, and, and what will it be like? But this was a glimpse into um, what what could like life as not a bike racer, um, yeah. something I've been doing for so long could look like, and um, so I think that was really healthy. And uh, and yeah, and it also <laughs> kind of I was like, ah, oh, like do you know I I'm super satisfied with my cycling career. Um, mm-hmm. Do I want to risk not being able to have a family to try to maybe get to one more Olympics that we don't know if it'll happen or not. Like there's, there's a lot yeah. of things going on in the world. So, um, I decided to, to see if, if, um, if I could get pregnant mm-hmm. and, uh, we did <laughs> right away. So <laughs> no death. Uh, <laughs> no, I was like, Oh, okay. <laughs> um, that worked. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah. And then, um, yeah, I think it kind of just like, it in way it, like it all although for sure it, it'll make um oh olympic as, aspirations next year more chal or not next year this year in a couple months six months more challenging yeah. um but um but at the same time i, I don't think i'd have those potentially those, those same regrets um so right. you know I've, i'm satisfied with what i've done with my career i mm-hmm. i want to see what i can what else i can do um, oh, and I have the support to do that, but you know, if I, if I have a baby and I'm not fast enough to go to the Olympics and that's not the end of the world, is it? So. <laughs> Don't worry. You'll be doing lots of other things with your baby yeah. on like your hip. Cause yeah. I think, uh, like you're saying, it's, it's kind of like the identity thing. It's like, who am I outside of being the bike racer? the Olympic athlete, the expectations of, you know, podium and, you know, bringing back, you know, hardware for Canada. And now you're just like, you know, and I love the fact that you've actually started giving back and doing other stuff in the community because you know what, Catherine, you are going to be so busy doing stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like giving back, Like your kids are going to be involved. Um, And, you know, I did the same thing as cycling. When, when I wasn't, when I was pregnant, I would be coaching and racing, not coaching, but coaching, just going to events. And I brought the kids with me, one kid, sorry. (laughs) And, you know, I'd be breastfeeding on the sidelines, like, you know, I, I brought the team and, 
and it just it never stopped but you know it, it was just an enjoyable time to be able to share that you know think yeah. about how much you have to share with your children well i, I mean it's, it's really neat because um so there's actually four athletes from cliff bar that <laughs> got pregnant this year and we're all gonna do within like a month of each other and uh I was talking to you, one of the women is a snowboarder and she's, this would be her second child. And, and she was saying that, um, you know, she did travel with her child afterwards and she's like, it's hard, but it's yes. so worth it because it, like every, every experience you have is just kind of amplified and that really like in terms of making yourself relatable to more, a bigger audience or like, you know, 85% of women have a child. So it's, mm -hmm. and that's like, that's a lot of people that you can relate to. And, and, mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously my experience as a, as an elite athlete, I definitely have some advantages of having been able to train more through my pregnancy. And, um, I'm super fortunate next year because, um, my sponsor is supporting me through, um, through next year and, and an attempt uh, <laughs> to get to Rio, um, cause I have met the selection criteria um, so, you know, I have that support. I've got a husband who's going to take paternity so that he can support me so that we can try our best to manage the training, the sleep. And, uh, so, you know, as far as, uh, as far as athletes go, I think I've got a pretty dream, dream set up to, to mm -hmm. make the most out of, um, out of motherhood, but also super, uh, motherhood and being an athlete, but, um, also just kind of have to be open to the new experience. There's obviously a lot of <laughs> yeah. what's possible, what's not possible, um, yeah. recovery time. And, um, yeah, so yeah, there's, there's going to be a lot of learning ahead. I'm, I'm sure some tears of fatigue, <laughs> um, but, oh, yeah. um, yeah, it's going to be pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, no doubt. And you know, that's why I want to, um, chat with you in about six months to see how everything's going and yeah. how motherhood <laughs> has shifted your perspective or maybe you're yeah. already ready and you've you've made things work because you can i mean women can um make the balance work especially if you have you know the support and yeah. uh I think it's, it's just a matter of timelines I, I don't think there's any question that you can get back it's mm -hmm. just how how quickly does your body and yeah. life enable that so um, or you yeah. might just make the decision that you know what no <laughs> i think yeah. i'm just going to focus around home help other yeah. athletes get there and uh, it's funny that you mention uh, a bunch of girls on the team remember i was mentioning kirsty and she had the same thing happened to her so there's like six girls who are all on the the um the track not the track team yeah i think it was the track no ice skating oh they yeah. all got pregnant for the first time within months of, like a month of each other and then they all got pregnant a second time within a month of each other <laughs> this like this weird right. thing so like you you're gonna have this this community of of you know like-minded women who yeah. you know are all you can support each other and uh and things like that but you know it's gonna be yeah, that's why I wanted to talk to you in like six months. Just book that in, see, see yeah. where you are. Cause show me, show me interviews of what I've said now. And <laughs> I know, let's just compare them. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna be racing, yeah. and I'm like, um, um you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm optimistic. I'm not like, I'm not. I don't think I'm realistic. I know it'll yeah. be hard, um, but all I can do is give my best, and um, we'll see, see what happens. So. Oh, I know. Well, you know, the thing is that you have all that training behind you. Yeah. It's just, you know, dialing it in. And like you said, the sleep, it's going to be <laughs> yeah. the first my months might be a little challenging, but as long as you have naps, you're okay. Yeah. <laughs> so now just finishing up, I have to thank you so much again, but do you have any advice for you know, new girl, like new girls getting into mountain biking and have, or 
have that dream of going to Olympics or they're on their way, is there anything that like maybe the younger you could share with them on um, their journey? Yeah, I think like the, probably the most important thing that I've learned is just to kind of stay true to yourself as an athlete. Mm -hmm. um, if you, you know, I, I think that's where I got a little off course going into the London Olympics is because I, I had this image of what an Olympic medalist was like. And uh -oh. that wasn't the way that I approached sport. Like for me, I was like, just go out there, do your best. And if you're giving your best, it's going to be, you know, a really good performance. But I'm like, no, like, that's not like an aggressive enough attitude for an Olympic medalist. Like you got to be like, you got to own it more and, and be more stating like what you need. But it made me too serious of an athlete. And for me, okay. like, I need to be, I need to be lighthearted. I like, it, it sounds cliche or it doesn't sound like as good in a news clip or whatever, but it's like, like, just go out there and give your best, keep it fun. Um, cause if you're having fun, you're going to go fast. And, yeah. um, I think like a lot of performance really does come from just enjoying what you do and, and seeing the opportunity in, in different situations. So, um, yeah, just be true to yourself. Don't, don't try to be an, an athlete that you see on TV or, or whatever. It's like, if you, if you found success, what was it that helped you be successful and keep doing that? Yeah. I love that because I think, I think that's so true. Um, just being authentic and genuine and, you know, just grateful too for mm -hmm. the experience and, and being there and going out and doing your best. And I think that's the best advice anybody could get as an athlete, not to, I hate to say it, but build up that ego. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I always try and see sport as like sports, an opportunity, not an entitlement. And so like never, never, I mean, own, own your value, but like, yeah. but see things as opportunities rather than like, people don't owe you stuff. You, you have to earn it. And so, I, yeah, I totally, I totally agree that with, I, I totally agree with you when you say that. So let's just finish it here. This has been amazing. Thank you so much. You've had, you know, so many good words of wisdom and I can't wait until, you know, for you to experience You're my the mom next... wisdom in six months. <laughs> yeah, I know the best part of life. No, because honestly, I think as, as women or, you know, just, um, I guess as women, like we just have so much to give and, you know, being able to share it with, you know, a growing family of kids, it's, you know, at first you might be like, oh my God, but honestly, <laughs> It does get a lot better and, and you'll, oh my gosh, you'll just appreciate and cherish like all those little moments, even though you'd be like, oh, I'd love to race. But then you're like, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? but yeah. it is, I, mean, I find like it getting out the door to train is the hardest part, but what, if you can get out, out the door, then it goes better. <laughs> That's what I say. Just drag the kid with you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the best yeah. thing. You're like, okay, we're going for a three hour ride. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. I'm a runner <laughs> and we're stopping now. breastfeed on the, yeah. uh, at, at mile 20 and, <laughs> yeah. but thank you so much. You've been an amazing guest and I love this interview because I think, you know, momhood and athleticism and women and cycling, um, you know, whether it's mountain biking, road cycling, it's, it's all just amazing to talk about, um, you know, aside from, you know, competition and stuff like that. But uh, thanks again. And thank you all. Thank you to all of our listeners for tuning in to this episode of Secrets from the Saddle with Catherine Prundrell. Prundrell? Prundrell. Prundrell. <laughs> um, there in Canloops, uh, beautiful BC. And don't forget to put on the notifications so you don't um, miss all the other episodes that are coming up. And last thing, make sure that you go and check out my coaching website, cyclingskillspro.com for all my latest online coaching courses, uh, webinars, and downloads. And don't forget, you're only one pedal stroke away from cycling like a pro, like Catherine, get you to the world. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thanks, Sylvie.
Thank you again. And before you take off, I have a couple quick announcements, cycling related, of course. So I have my online bike maintenance webinar, though you'll learn how to change your tires, repair broken chains, adjust your brakes, and learn how to use all the tools that are in your bike bag that you should be carrying with you. Go to bmcwebinar.com. The next one is my four hour cycling skills intensive course. Now this is where you're going to get all the cycling skills you need to take your experience to the next level, whether it's on the road or online, you're going to learn proper bike pedal form that's going to help you with your efficiency. You're going to learn how to climb hills, all the skills, tips and tricks and speed and power. Not to mention, we're going to finish off with nutrition that ties everything together. So go to cyclingskillspro.com and you can find all those information on my courses, webinars, and downloads there. Take care and have an amazing day. And remember, you're only one pedal stroke away from cycling like a pro.